Hello everybody, Dave Bosworth here from Excitec. Let's have a look at some of the new features in Civil 3D 2016. So we'll start off by having a look at some of the drafting functions in 2016. You'll see we've got a corridor model in here and there's a pressure pipe underneath the road. And if I just pan across to the profile view, you'll see that pressure pipe is represented as a crossing pipe in the profile view. We now have some new label styles in 2016 for dealing with crossing pipes. So for pipe networks you'll see these um, not only do we have crossing sections but also crossing profile labels. For pressure pipes we have both crossing section and crossing profile labels which are both new. So let's create a new label style for this pressure pipe. So this is going to label the outside top of the, the pipe with its elevation. So we'll just go into the detail here and start adding the information. You'll see we new have some new attributes that we can use. So I'm going to use the top outside pipe elevation and just add that into the label. And for good measure, we'll just pop in here also something to represent the chainage of that location. So we'll just add the chainage information as well. And when I apply this, you'll see that we've also got an option to change the anchor position uh, of the leader arrow that will be placed in the drawing when we add that label. So I've placed that onto the top of the pipe. So let's add some labels. We're going to add pressure pipe profile labels and I'll select my new label style and we'll just pop the label on this pipe here and as you can see it now labels it with the elevation and chainage as we would expect it to appear. Next up we're going to have a look at the ability to flip section views. If we're doing a river channel analysis we often require the sections to be drawn the opposite way around to how they would normally be drawn if you were creating say a road design. So in this example we've got our section views already drawn. If I pick this section view here and we'll just click on it and go to edit section view style you'll see we now have an option to flip this from right to left so effectively we're looking upstream instead of downstream so we'll just flip that over and you'll see all the section views immediately update so we'll take a look at some of the new design features in 2016 the first one I want to show you is the ability to create a surface from a point cloud so we've got this point cloud loaded into our model and I'm just going to go to this new tool create surface from point cloud I'm going to do this by selecting a polygon so we'll click on the command line and choose the polygon option and now we can just trace the area that we want to use for our surface you have to bear in mind with this tool that the point clouds typically contain millions of points uh, picking a very large area is going to take an awful long time to create the surface um, and will probably be too big so you may have to either clean up your point cloud or do it in stages. We'll just select a style for this uh, surface and we'll also just give it a name and you'll see that in the dialog here we have the option to continue adding new areas or new point clouds to this selection or in fact deleting them if we want and there's a, a, a dialog here to illustrate how it will handle points that appear to be off the surface and what sort of interpolation takes place. This is going to process the point cloud in the background uh, so we can carry on working while it's doing this uh, because it can take some time but when it's done it'll pop up a little message for you on the screen and we'll just click on that zoom into the point cloud and we can just have a look at that in 3D. It's a great tool and certainly if you don't try and capture too big an area works quite well. For those of you that do more complex corridor modeling they've added a new feature to Subassembly Composer that allows us to repeat detail. You'll see this new loop geometry option. Here I've got a very simple step shape and I'm going to tell it to loop a set number of times. You'll see the updates in the little preview dialog. So not only can I tell it to repeat a series of links 
a set number of times but also I can set a target surface. So ideally what I want to happen here is for these steps to be generated until they hit a ground surface. When I apply that in my subassembly in Civil 3D I can set the number of loops. I'm going to set it to 50. It draws a set number of them as a preview but that will ensure that I get uh, enough iterations until I hit the surface. Now I've got an alignment and a profile in this drawing already created. You'll see the profile is quite a way above the ground so there should be a good number of steps here to, to model in the drawing. And we're going to create a corridor using my new uh, subassembly. So we'll just call this steps, set my subassembly and give it the target surface and we'll build that corridor model. Just change the frequency to quite a small interval so they show up well. And we'll just apply that and build. And now in the model you can see we've got a corridor. Um, but more importantly, if I just show you in the cross-section view, you can see it's generated uh, the corridor with all its steps. If I look at this as a surface, you'll see it's created this quite nice um, surface from the steps. It's great for things like benching in embankments and so forth. The last of our new design features that I want to show you is the ability to add uh, target alignments to a corridor based on their layer. So you see I've got two new offset alignments here in this model that I want to use as targets for this corridor. So when I go and edit the targets for the corridor and we actually select the carriageway left here, in the target dialog box we have a by layer option. When I click the by layer button it shows me which layers the different alignments are on and I can pick the layer I want to use. You'll see that selects the alignment in the list and I can just then add them, tell it to target furthest and when I rebuild that it simply updates the corridor. Now the great thing about this tool is that we don't have to navigate through the drawing picking lots of target alignments. We can make sure they're all on one layer and pick them all in one go. I'm going to move on now and show you some of the project management features that have been added in Civil 3D 2016. In this drawing I've got some alignments that I've created. Uh, one for the center and one for the left channel. In this EG surface drawing I also have some alignments which I have added as data references, data shortcuts. And I want to use these alignments in preference to the ones that I created in the road design drawing. So I'm going to flip back to the road design drawing and on this manage panel I've got manage data shortcuts. This new dialog is showing me on the left pane what's in my drawing and on the right hand pane what's available as data shortcuts. You can see that center line in the left is based on my current drawing and I want to change that so that it points to this data shortcut option uh, main road center line that's in the EG surface drawing. So I basically pick the two and change the link here and what I've done now is basically swap the alignment in the road design drawing for the one that's in the data shortcuts. And it will do this without breaking the corridor which is really great. So I can update a drawing with new objects that are referenced in without having to recreate the, those objects. You can see if I just rebuild the corridor in here it all works and updates fine. No broken links. Next project management tool that's been added is the ability to add what they term a BIM underlay. This is basically attaching a Navisworks model to my drawing model. So this is a new option to use an NWC or NWD. It's rather like an XREF and in fact uses the XREF dialog to, to add this. You can set how the path is handled and also some basic unit settings and scaling. So I've picked this building model that has originally come from Revit and you'll see that it drops it in in the correct location. It is coordinated and we have this sort of transparency on it to indicate that it is in fact a, a referenced in model. 
but there are some uh, variables that you can use uh, to change the degree of fading and the coloring on that model so CM fade color changes the fading CM fade opacity changes the coordinated model uh, transparency unfortunately at this stage we can't snap to this but it's great for coordination purposes for those of you that are using Vault with Civil 3D they've added the ability to create subfolders under our data references here's my Vault project shown to me in Prospector and you'll see I've already got a pipe network here under the pipe networks item I'm going to check this drawing in uh, because I've created a new pipe network that I want to add in as a data reference so as I check this in I can now include my new Storm2 pipe network and add that into the vault now the idea behind this ability to add subfolders to our data references is that we might want to create an extra level of organization. So my pipe networks could include foul and storm drainage, for example. So in here, I've created a subfolder called storm drainage, and I can drag my data references in to that subfolder structure. When I go back to my civil 3D drawing, I need to update the view in Prospector. The easiest way for me to do this is to check the drawing back in. Uh, I don't have any new data references to create, so I'll just finish on that. And when I've done that, if I scroll down now and look at the view of Vault in Prospector, you'll see that under my pipe networks item, I have a subfolder called Storm Drainage, and my two data references are now under the subfolder. So the last two features I want to show you relate to data exchange in Civil 3D 2016. In this drawing here, you can see I've got some corridor solids that have generated from the corridor model. I've got a drainage network created as a pipe network. And we have a pressure network down the bottom here. And obviously, and depending on the styles I use, when I flip these into a 3D view, um, they are um, shown to me as solid 3D objects. They've added the ability in 2016 to export to IFC. So from a 3D view here, I can now export and choose a new option, IFC. So this will create an IFC file used widely in architecture as a data exchange format doesn't have all the support for civil objects but nonetheless it will export a solid object from these items so if I just choose my IFC file and you can see the export is quite quick we'll just let that run and if I flip now to Revit we've got a building model in here and I'm going to use the link IFC option to bring in my civil model. Revit won't recognize all the, the, the object types as Revit objects but what it does allow me to do is perform some degree of coordination inside Revit but more importantly when we want to display this type of civil object in Revit uh, drawings you'll see that for example in this section view it will actually section the IFC correctly which it wouldn't do if I simply linked in a CAD model from Civil 3D so you can see here we've got the ground line we've got pipes shown and if I just pan across here we've even got the corridor solids sectioned in the right place and last but not least we have a new tool in 2016 the ability to open an InfraWorks model we've got some options we can choose to set up styles of the objects uh, and a few other settings before we actually connect to the InfraWorks model and you can save those settings and you'll see I'm going to use those in a minute so I'm going to pick my InfraWorks model from this list now they should share the same coordinate system but you can if you want to choose a different coordinate system and I'm going to just bring in a part of the model so I'm going to use the online map data to actually select the area that I want to, to bring in. So you'll see the border showing me the extent of my InfraWorks model. I'm just going to pick a subset of that to import. 
choose my settings that I've saved and we'll open that model. That will read the InfoWorks SQLite database um, and recreate those objects as civil objects. Now what I really like about this is these objects are come across as editable objects so the alignments are proper civil 3D alignments with straights and curves and we've even got a bridge in our InfraWorks model if I just select this and show you the bridge that has come across as a 3D solid so that I can display it in the right place in civil 3D it actually looks quite quite good so as I was saying because we get native civil 3D objects from our InfraWorks model we can then of course go and edit it so I'm going to create a corridor from one of the alignments I brought in. It's come in with its profile as well from InfoWorks and I'm just going to choose an assembly, pick a surface to target and build that corridor. So you can create a corridor and edit it based on the alignments that you've created in InfoWorks and of course if you want to then push this back into InfoWorks you can do. Um, it's not a direct link but relies on you creating an IMX file which you can then read back in InfraWorks. So that brings us to the end of our look at what's new in Civil 3D 2016. I hope you've seen some things that are going to be useful for you. If you want more information on new releases of Autodesk products visit our website excitech.co.uk or drop us an email or give us a call.